we're through with the heavy stuff, and I think you've earned a light biter break, and now we're going to go from the world's problems and the spiritual world and everything threatening Israel to the 1969 World Series champion New York Mets. We're going to talk some baseball spring trainings going on, and it's a thrill to have on Art Shamsky, who I know because he's going to be involved in an event called Passover in Paradise in Puerto Rico at a five-star resort. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that's Club Kosher's Passover in Paradise, which is at the Gran Malia Beach and Golf Resort in Puerto Rico. He's going to be one of the people fe featured there, as will be uh, singer Shlomo Haviv. And uh, a little bit more about Art uh, Shamsky. He was platooned in right field uh, for the Miracle Mets of 1969. He also played, I think, even longer for that, for the Cincinnati Reds. He uh, actually once hit four home runs in consecutive at-bats over two games. He's, only, he's the first person, only person ever, to hit three home runs in a game, which he did not start. I believe there were extra innings. He's been a fixture on WFAN in New York, and he is the author of The Magnificent Seasons, a book about the Mets, Jets, and Knicks, all winning their first championships in the period 1969-1970. That's a long intro there. Art Chamsky, welcome to the show. It's great to be here, Adam. Thank you. Uh, well, i got to bring up, actually, maybe I, it wasn't something light. I have to bring up something because there was a huge loss in the world of Mets fans in the last month, and it was Gary Carter, and I found out when we prepped that you actually knew Gary Carter, even though you played for the Mets at, in different decades. Well, Gary, uh, I've known him over the years, a really terrific guy, and, of course, we had the, the common bond of being part of two uh, championships with the New York Mets, but, uh, you know, he was one of these guys that was, uh, that once you met him, he was, uh, you know, he was one of these people that you really remembered because he was such a nice person and was such a big catalyst on that 1986 Met team. And uh, I think it, it, it's a tribute to, to, to him and his legacy that uh, when he did pass away, the, 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 so many people were, were sad by this. And, uh, of course, his teammates who I've known over the years, Ron Dorg and I were in business together uh, in a restaurant here in New York for a number of years. So uh, we go back a little bit, but uh, Gary was a terrific guy. And... Uh, and, uh, you know, really died too young. Uh, I promise this will be the last uh, rest in peace I bring up during the course of the show. At least it's not someone who died in the last month. But Tug McGraw is very popular here, and as a young player, he was on the 1969 Mets. Uh, can you share some memories of him? Well, Tug was one of these characters that you never forget in your lifetime. Uh, uh, we were very, very good friends. And, I, in fact, I used to just call him Frank, because a lot of people don't even know his first name was Frank. I just called him Tug, and, and, uh, and um, I went to the funeral down in Philadelphia, and it was a sad time for me because uh, he was a great friend and a great teammate, but a character that, that uh, you know, unpredictable, but uh, and not only that, a terrific left-hand pitcher, and, and many people forget about his prowess as a pitcher because he was such a, uh, a strong character, but, but it was really a great guy, and, you know, that 69 team, we lost seven members of that team, and Every time something like that happens, it's just really a shock for me because once you win a championship on a team like that, especially a team that nobody thought could win, then all of a sudden you go from the, being one of the worst to the, one of the, to the best. It's always a shock, but you, you form these relationships with guys that last forever, and Tug was one of these people that uh, was such a strong, dominant figure, but uh, a great person and a good friend and uh, uh, one of the best, most uh, notable characters I ever met in baseball. You were also manager in the short-lived Israel Baseball League of the Modine Miracle. Uh, can you tell us about that experience? Uh, it was great. Uh, unfortunately, like many startup things, it didn't last as long as it should have. Uh, it was uh, kind of mismanaged and underfunded, but I had a great time in Israel in 2007. It was the first professional baseball league there. Uh, I knew it was going to be a tough job because obviously basketball and soccer are the two big sports over there, but uh, the time I spent in Israel was one of the most incredible times in my life. Uh, I got to know many, many good people and learned a lot about the state of Israel. And, and for me, it was a, a wonderful experience. Uh, uh, baseball in the Holy Land uh, was just such a uh, such a fantastic experience because you were playing on these little fields, which quite honestly weren't the best condition. But they were. Uh, you, you said uh, I said many times I had no idea who walked on this earth uh, a thousand years ago because it was such a, a spiritual thing, but I loved it. I, I wish I would have kept doing it and wish I was still involved in it, but for me, an experience to manage over there and try and, and bring the game of baseball uh, uh, to some degree over there. I, they still do it, but not um, you know, not as big as I, I would have hoped they would like, but I think they will have a team in that World Baseball um, um, tournament in the next year or so, uh, and I think they're going to try and get some 
employer to do that, but for me to be over there in 2007 was a great experience. Let me ask you, you were a member of a Mets team with very low expectations that went on to win the World Series. Uh, we don't know if the 2012 Mets are going to win the World Series, but we certainly know that there are low expectations for them. What's your prediction for what happens in the National League East this year? Well, the thing about it is, obviously, Philadelphia has got a strong team. Atlanta's a really good team. Washington is always going to be improved. Uh, the Mets, uh, besides some of the off-the-field troubles they're having, have really had some problems uh, with injuries over the last couple of years. And, and, you know, I always tell people the one thing about baseball, although it's been proven in other sports, but the one thing that really is, is, is something that you should keep in mind is the, the, the thing to do is to make it to the playoffs. You don't have to necessarily win your division make it to the playoffs because anything can happen short series your team starts playing better good pitching good defense and and uh, you know at this time of the year uh, you know with, even though you've had some bad years in the past everything is optimistic uh, just look at it as a positive uh, if I was talking to the Mets as a team I'd say hey 1969 we finished uh, ninth a half game out of tenth place in the National League there was only the National League in America there wasn't division play and so in 1969 they started the two divisions and if you went into that season thinking that, hey, we finished uh, almost last and we're not going to do anything this year, we would have never accomplished anything. It's all about learning how to win a few games. Those games that you lose 2-1, to 3-2, to two, you find ways to win, and that's what happened to us. Of course, we had terrific pitching with Seaver and, and Tug was on that team and Kuzman and Nolan Ryan and Gary Gentry and great defense and timely hitting, but you know the Mets just have to go into the season thinking, hey, last year was last year. We got some problems off the field, but the reality of it is new season, anything can happen, we just got to start finding ways to win games that we normally find ways to lose. Gotcha. Art uh, Shamsky, thank you so much for coming on. If you want to see a lot more of Art Shamsky, you want to go to PassoverInParadise.com because he will be at the Gran Malia Beach and Golf Resort in Puerto Rico uh, for Passover. And thanks for coming on today. Uh, also, Adam, too, if anybody wants to just get me to come and speak at one of their functions, they can go on my website, www.artshamsky.com, and, and certainly they can contact me there. Thanks, Art. Go Phillies. All right. Thank you, Adam.